if you have a website and it says home in the title tag, that that's your lowest hanging fruit for SEO. You know, there's millions of sites that's sites out there that say home, but that doesn't tell Google anything. Are you a home repair store? Do you do home renovations? Are you, uh, you know, making houses? We don't, Google doesn't know. So change that to a keyword that is relevant to your business. You know, podcast for young entrepreneurs after hours. That's much better than home after hours. That doesn't tell Google anything. So fix that. <laughs> What's up, action takers? Welcome back to After Hours Entrepreneur. Today, we are joined by Jeff Fulkerson from FroBro.com. His web design skills are in the house today. We are gonna teach you how to build a better website, how to rank for search engine optimization, that beautiful, beautiful SEO. We're gonna help you get some more sales. We're gonna help you get traffic and sales from your website today. I'd like to thank Jeff for sponsoring today's episode. And without further ado, DJ, run the tape. Okay, come on, I'm ready to make some sales to my, my website. Let's go, let's go, run it. Before we get started, I wanna give a special shout out to our sponsor, Riverside.fm, the best place to record your remote interviews. All right, DJ, run the tape. Jeff, what's up? Hey, Mark. Good to see you. How's it going? Hey, the, uh, the it's awesome. The pleasure is all mine. I got the fro bro <laughs> himself in the house. Jeff, I cannot wait to get into it. Just by doing some examination and some investigation into your actions, into you, uh, what you do for websites, for business owners, for lead gen, mm -hmm. I can tell this is going to be what after hours entrepreneurs need to hear. So I'm ready to get into it, but I, you know, I, I kind of want to start at the beginning, Jeff, before we okay. get into the, the really technical stuff. And I kind of wanted to start and say, Hey, you know, how did you get started in web design in the first place? Well, it's a good question. Uh, you know, in terms of computers and technology, I've always been drawn to it. Like even from a young age, like in high school, I was building computers and learning about them. And I always knew I wanted to do something with computers. So, um, uh, you know, I, I did websites on the side for my parents and their business and friends and stuff here and there, uh, even up through college. And so uh, I studied computer science. And then after working a little bit, I'm doing these websites on the side. So I decided to actually start uh, a company for websites, like make this official, okay, I'm doing it anyways. Uh, but I started it as a side thing, you know, I had a full time job and I did on the side. Um, but the way I started shifting over full time is that, uh, you know, I was working with a startup uh, for a couple of years, but they started having some cash flow issues. So I just kind of shifted my attention over uh, to Frobro to start building it up and actually going after it instead of it being a side thing. I'm like, okay, this is now my thing. I'm going to put all my attention and effort into growing this. Um, and I think, you know, I started with websites because that's what I knew and I had the most experience with. That's what people usually came to me for. But I realized early on that people don't usually just want a website. Uh, you know, if you're a business, you want more clients and in a lot of people's minds, okay, better website equals more clients and it often does. Right. But there's a lot more to it than that. So that's when I started adding other services like uh, premium hosting and maintenance and SEO and ad management, because, you know, we can talk about the website is one piece of the puzzle, right? You know, once you got people there, you got to tell them what you do, why you're good at it. Why should they contact you? But the, you, you got to get people the site first. Doesn't matter how good it looks if nobody ever sees it. So that's where the other SEO and ads and stuff come into play. Yeah, obviously expanding your product offering is is a good way to actually increase the value that you bring, which increases the cost of your services. But right. what I'm interested in, Jeff, is that moment. That moment where okay. you were like, <laughs> "I'm leaving. I'm going all in. I'm going in on the Frobro. Frobro.com is where it's going down." What were the, like, what was that moment like for you? Did you already have enough clients in place where it was going to be pretty comfortable? Were you like, all right, we're diving to the deep end of the pool. Were you building your parachute on the way down? How did, how did it look leaving your job slash uh, career to actually go all in on Frobro? Got it. Well, yeah, I didn't have enough clients to support me to match, you know, my salary or anything. Uh, it was kind of just a necessity of that point. Like, okay, I need to get more clients because I'm clearly not bringing enough over here. So, uh, you know, I had always had kind of the entrepreneurial bug since I was little. And so I'd done, you know, a lemonade stand and sold cookies to the bikers that rode down the street or, um, in high school, you know, I sold candy bars to my classmates. I'd go to 
uh, the bulk store, buy the king size candy bars, you know, sell them to people, raise money, put a stereo in my car. So like I did stuff, you know, I had done some Amazon stuff here and there, but it was always a side thing and never full bore. So at this point when I was, you know, looking at, okay, I don't want to go find another different corporate job. I've got Frobro here. I, I want to make this a thing and make it succeed and not just a side thing and hope it works. I'm going to burn the ships. It's bro, bro or bust. I'm all in on this. Um, and I, yeah. at that moment, Jeff, did you already have like a framework in mind? Did you have an offer in place? Did you say, this is what I can do. I'm going to go sell it. Like wh at what point were you at in your business at, at this time? I had a few clients, you know, I'd done a few websites. I knew I was good at websites. Um, and I knew I could charge a decent amount for a good quality website. And so that's what I was starting with. Uh, I had not thought ahead to SEO and all those other things at that point. Um, that came later once I started doing this every day and realizing, okay, I need to, these are other needs that my clients have that I can help them fulfill. And so I spent a lot of time learning additional skills, uh, finding partners and contractors, people I can work with that can help me bring in these different aspects uh, and provide the level of quality that I want to you know, offer and put my name on to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm filling those needs, but also growing my company at the same time. Does that kind of answer? Well, yeah, no, it, 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 it it's, it's painting this picture, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a really hard step to make. Um, you know, you need to make sure you have the right system in place. You have right. a, a way of generating leads consistently, um, a way of managing a team. It, you know, one of the, you know, so I read through, I was reading through John Lee Dumas's uh, book, the, Un the Common Path to uncommon success. Mm -hmm. And one of the points he makes in that book is that you shouldn't start hiring all these team members until pretty far down the road in the process, which is something I actually flipped, flipped and got backwards, which cost me tens of thousands of dollars. That's a story for another podcast. This, so the idea that you're mentioning here is kind of like white label or partnering, partnering with firms that might already, um, have a system in place, right? Can you kind of walk me through what that what that uh, part of your business looks like as far when you're starting off teaming up with other agencies, white labels, freelancers, contractors that can help fill supply. Um, and, uh, yeah. Sorry. You demand. cut out for a second there. Um, but basically I, I, so I didn't hear the whole question, but I, I'll answer what I think you're asking is, uh, you know, the first couple of years, it was just all me. Um, and it wasn't until more recently that I actually started um, intentionally cultivating these fulfillment partners and team members. And I did bring in, you know, a virtual assistant full time. And so I kind of tried, I dabbled with assistants a little bit at first and it was a little early, then I stopped and then I came back to it a little later. Like you said, if you do it too early, you end up realizing, Hey, this is kind of expensive. And if the work they're doing isn't paying for itself yet, then you should back off, uh, in my opinion. So that's what I did. Yeah, certainly being uh, thoughtful about your expenses is, is is something I learned the hard the hard way. Um, and this idea of fulfillment partners is great because it can be really complicated to build all these different systems in house. And if you can merge together and partner up with other firms, yes. it's a really good way of I think. Right. Well, it does two things. Giving so a better quality result for less money at the end of the day. Um, so. Let me can I expand on that? Is that you know as a freelancer, you know when I started, I could do everything on my own. Uh, but if I'm having someone else do graphic design, I've got someone else doing the site implementation. Each person is more of an expert in that particular area, the messaging, copywriting. So like you said, it's a better end result. Uh, but go ahead. And that my friends is what it's all about getting a better result for your client. That's how we start to charge more. It's how we get more referrals. That's how we get more testimonials. And, uh, that's how we drive more eyeballs. To our website. So Jeff, we've kind of talked a little bit about the formulation of your business. I kind of wanted to kind of see how you got into it, but I have a question. Okay. Everyone, you know, when you're starting a business, everyone says you need a website, you need a website, make sure you get the website, get the website name. Do you have a domain for your website yet? But I kind of sometimes think that we don't actually consider what the website is fricking for. So in your eyes, Jeff, what role does a business website serve for me as an owner? This is a great question. And I think you're right. A lot of people don't think about it. So it's just like a, a check mark on a list that they have somewhere and then they move on and don't think about it for years. Right? So uh, a website for a business, um, 
it's your first impression to the world for so many people that are browsing Google and find you or that see an ad and go to your site. And what those people are gonna do is judge you. That's why they're going to the website. They're gonna judge you and see, okay, is this guy legit? Is he professional? Is this a fly-by-night organization that's gonna disappear with my money tomorrow? Like, do they have reviews? Do other, did other people like them? You know, do they talk a good game or do they come through? Do they have a license number that I can check? You know, all of these types of things, um, you know, people are, are looking at it. So you need to make sure you're presenting your best self to the world, putting your best foot forward by giving that polished professional look to let people know they can trust you, answer any questions up front or objections that they have. Um, that's another element of it, right? There's the messaging, there's the look and feel, um, and just giving them a way to get in touch if it's a good fit. Um, and we can spend a lot of time talking about these. So you tell me where you want to kind of dive in. Right. So, I mean, you just kind of whiz through them like it's nothing. But listen, I, I don't do websites for, for a living, baby. So I just kind of want to slow it down, slow it down. Right. So the first thing I heard you say there was it's your it's an impression. It's the first impression right. that you make. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I think that's good. I always want to make it first. Uh, you only have one chance at a first yes. impression. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the second item uh, you had mentioned was kind of like credibility. Right. Building up your credibility. Right. And if someone goes to your site and sees a template from 1997 that says, you know, GoDaddy at the bottom, it, you know, that, that, that tells them they're going to infer that the level of quality or, or professionalism or attention to detail that you brought to your website is the same as what you do in your business, which is obviously not a fair comparison, but we do it all the time. We look at it and we're like, ah, okay, I don't know if this is the one. And you keep scrolling, right? You, you go to the next result on Google. Um, another thing is if it doesn't load fast enough, a lot of people won't even see it. So that's where optimization comes into play. And we can talk about why hosting matters and why load time matters. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that first impression is so important because once you lose that, if you haven't captured their email or something, you're never going to see them again. And to me, one of the, the, I think the bigger problems when it comes to first impressions is being confusing, right? We have a, a, an initial landing page. This is, so this is something that I always kind of check myself on. If someone sends me an, a message or an email or they hit me up on LinkedIn and they say something like, hey, hey Mark, what's on your website? And what exactly you do? Or, you know, if, if there's anyone that ever is asking you a question, like that, to me, that means I'm not being clear enough. What, what do you think about a first, like if someone lands, they click my link, they land on my, on my first page. What are some tips, Jeff, so I don't confuse people? How can I be more clear? Great question. So, you have to know your client and uh, you have to know what you bring to the table, the value that you provide and why it's important to that client. Because otherwise you'll end up being like everybody else who just lists all your services. Um, like I could say, we make websites. Okay, who cares? So does everybody else. But if I say, you know, we make websites for small business owners that actually bring in clients. Okay, now we're more specific. We're talking to the business owner who cares about getting more clients from their business website, right? Um, so you need to spend time thinking about that. And you do have to ask yourself those couple questions. Okay, what do I want my website to do? What is, and then what do I want the client to do when they get there? So is the goal of this website to turn new people into customers? Is it to turn, you know, give my customers resources so they can log in and do something? Is it both? Um, am I going to have investors come into this page? And so you kind of have to plan that out. Because in some cases, the answer is yes to all three. And so you need to make sure that there's a clear way to lead each of those people to the right spot on your website uh, without ignoring the needs of the other person, right? So if it's a new person coming, you don't want to just be talking about investors. Um, and so that's why you'll see, you know, logins usually in the corner. Because once you're a customer member, you ignore all the other stuff for the newbies. You go right to your area and vice versa, right? If you're new, you're gonna ignore the login link and you're gonna read what they have in that hero section. So you can address both, but you have to think through it so that you do it in an intentional manner. Otherwise, you're not going to reach those goals because you've never thought through them. That, I mean, in, in talking about first impression and clarity, so this, in, so this is something that I actually have a little bit of challenge with, Jeff. I serve slightly different markets. I serve different problems for different people, uh, uh, different customers, and so I wonder, do I need just completely separate websites for the different psychographics that I serve? Or do I need separate landing pages? Because I don't want to make things complicated. I don't want multiple mm -hmm. websites, do I? But can I speak to multiple audiences with a single website landing page? It's If your audiences are similar enough, sure. But 
if they're different, then it's always best to have separate landing pages or at least pages that go into more detail dedicated to each audience. So you sure. will always have a home page, right? And so that home page then can become an area where you segment your traffic. A lot of sites that do this will have two big boxes, right? That say, uh, first time visitor, click here to learn about blah, blah, blah. And then um, welcome back if you've been here before, come over here to our resource area, whatever it is, but you could do it up front um, to let people know where to go. Uh, other sites that offer a bunch of different services will still put that right at the front. And this is becoming more popular these days of just breaking it down initially. Okay, if you care about web design, go here. If you care about SEO, go here. Um, and how you say it, of course, matters. You don't just want to list some links, but if you put a little thought into it, you can make it a helpful experience for the user instead of an overwhelming one where you're presenting like a menu, right? So here are the things we can help you with. You self-select your choice, why I'm here. And then that page that they land on goes into great detail and is speaking directly to that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, it definitely does. And having clear menus set up, like your website is really very clean, very clear. Not a lot of words. That's one thing. Yo, guys, why are you making me read so much when I'd be landed on your website? Just, I don't want all the words. What about video? How, how important do you think maybe having like a video on your landing page is do you think that maybe slows up the load time is that a positive is it a negative should i let me put it this way let me throw it at the pro bro himself right now jeff should i have a video on my website homepage? uh it depends so <laughs> i know you don't like that answer ah. but um if, if you spend time um writing a script uh with your client in mind and having figured out what you bring to the table you can put together a one minute video that highlights who you are and why you're different. And that can do really well. You know, video is dynamic, it's engaging, people stay in your site longer and they, it's a quick path to a connection with your target client member, right? So um, yes, it can work really well, uh, but there are ways to do it that loads quickly and there are ways to do it that loads slowly. So typically I would recommend hosting your video somewhere else other than your own WordPress site. So something like Vimeo, or another site that's designed specifically for video hosting. And that way it's not part of the initial site load. The site can still uh, load everything else. And then it loads that video without uh, preventing the other stuff from showing up. Yeah, like basically embedding the video on the page, right? right. The, the, one of the things that you had mentioned, Jeff, was making sure that you have a script. So mm -hmm. to me, a script is valuable for, for two reasons. A, I wanna be really concise. I really wanna get, a, you know, I want to keep it under 60 mm -hmm. seconds. The other reason I think scripts are useful is for leveraging keywords. If you know that your audience is typing in certain words into Google, they're typing certain words into YouTube, mm -hmm. into Alexa, you want to be ranking for those keywords, right? Yes. That's what SEO is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're doing a, a video and you're hosting on YouTube, uh, it, Part of the scripts can be turned into captions, right? And they're gonna index those and that's gonna be part of what people can find when they're searching. So yes, post your video on YouTube, but also embed it on your site. If, um, I, I remember there's a quote, uh, I forget who it was, it was Abraham Lincoln or somebody. He's like, you know, sorry, I wrote you such a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one. Um, <laughs> it's oh, like you said, you know, it, it takes a long time to get clear and concise. Um, it's easy to ramble and kind of try to explain things, but if you want your video to hit and come across quickly, you really need to spend the time to take out any of the filler stuff or the things that don't really matter uh, so that that end result really you know, has that punch to it. Yeah, I definitely agree there. I, I kind of want to kind of push, push, keep pushing along through this web design conversation. We've talked a lot um, about kind of like the formatting of, of your, your website, your first, your first page, what it's for. I, I really feel, you know, for me anyway, I look at website as like a, a very important sales tool. If not, it's like my mm -hmm. salesman, it's always on yeah. call. Um, but we need to, we need lead. Listen, what good is a salesman? If, if, or woman, I see you saleswomen out there. Don't, don't behave. You know, for all my salespeople out there, for all my sales folk, we need leads. Jeff, if I don't, if no one is, if I'm not on the phone with anyone, if I'm not shaking hands with anyone, I'm not selling anything. And then what, what, what good of a salesperson am I? So what, how are we going to get people to actually go to our website? Right? So we can break that down into a few different ways. I want to kind of start with something that I can do proactively. I don't need to hire anyone. I can go into my, 
my website right now that can make some changes. How important are keywords? If I know, for example, I'm in podcasting, how important would the podcasting keyword be on my website? Well, podcasting is actually a really broad keyword. Uh, and I'd say don't try to rank for that. Um, you would want to get more specific and focus on a long tail keyword that um, is going to be easier to rank for. Because generic terms, you're going to com be competing with Wikipedia and dictionary.com. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so you're, you you got to get a little more specific than that. So for you, it might be talking to... Um, you know, young entrepreneurs looking to start a six figure side hustle or, and so you can think of how does that relate to podcasting that I want to uh, target and uh, could be podcasting for new entrepreneurs. That is a long tail keyword that you could then try to rank for because it's more specific. So um, yeah, it's always about competition, how likely it is to uh, rank for that term. What's up after hours entrepreneur Mark here with an important message for you. You do not want to look bad and sound bad online. You don't want it. I don't want it. And your fans most certainly don't want it. I need to tell you from personal experience that the best way to improve the quality of your content is with Riverside.fm. Riverside.fm is my go-to for recording the highest quality podcast and video content from anywhere. So why use Riverside? Well, Riverside is going to give you the highest quality 4K video recordings. You're also going to get uncompressed, crispy, clean audio. Honestly, the best that I've seen. You're going to get separate tracks recorded when you're interviewing people and collaborating, which makes it very easy to change your audio levels. In fact, Riverside is even going to give you a video editor and social media clip creator directly within the program. Listen, it's time to avoid looking bad and start looking amazing. And the best way to do that is with Riverside.fm. Start free today and use code friends of Mark for a special offer. Again, get started with Riverside.fm. Use code friends of Mark and start looking and sounding like your best self today. All right, let's get back in the episode. All right, Jeff, so you've laid out a great framework for how to set up our pages, some quick tips. And obviously, we can get a lot more if we go to frobro.com. That's www.frobro.com for a ton more resources. One of the things I want to dig into a little bit more is how I can turn my website, which, let's face it, is a salesperson. Our website is the greatest salesperson on our team. And as a business owner, I want to send leads to my best salesperson. I want to send people to my salesperson so we can do the job of selling. I also want to see all the things that I can do personally as a business owner to make that work. So keywords, what's this about? Every, yeah, listen, everyone's going to Google to type in the name of my business, their business, the service, the product that they want. They're going to YouTube, they're going to Alexa. And I think that it's probably a good thing for me as a business owner to rank for certain words. So for example, if I'm in podcasting and I'm a podcast agent, should I be using the word like podcasting all over my website? Help me out here, Jeff. Yeah, that's that's a very important piece. So we've talked about the website, which is the sales guy, but you need to get people there. So SEO is what you're touching on, right? With keywords, um, that's a way to get in front of people who are searching for certain things. Now for you, you probably shouldn't try to target just the word podcasting because it's very generic. Um, it's also going to be really hard to rank for because there's a ton of websites that talk about podcasting. It could be Wikipedia that you're now competing with uh, and every other podcast out there. So you want to get really specific in picking a keyword that you want to go after. And we call them long tail keywords. Uh, so uh, you might do podcasting for new entrepreneurs. That's more specific. That's something that's going to be easier to rank for. And that phrase is now what you're going to use on your web page when you're talking about it. Uh, it'll be much easier to rank for that. And it'll be more useful because then the people searching for that will be the ones you want to see your stuff. Um, when you rank for a more generic keyword, a lot of people end up bouncing from your site. It really hurts your statistics. You're like, why am I getting all these people? But nobody's, you know, uh, uh, they're not contacting me or why, why isn't it working? Uh, so you want to get more specific. Um, in general, SEO is just one channel, one way to get people to your website. Uh, it's one that you can do a lot of it 
for free if you spend a little time figuring out how it works. But the, the whole idea is that you're building your site up to be helpful to humans in the eyes of Google so that when someone searches for something on Google, Google decides, hey, this would be a helpful result for that person searching for that thing. Right, right. And I mean, that's the point of the keyword, right? The point of the keyword is to help the computer, the algorithm, technology, right. know who to, who your site is for, know who, yeah. to, who knew who to show it to. What about podcasting, by the way? I run a podcast agency. I get uh, a lot of different uh, converse, get into a lot of conversations about this, but does having a podcast impact and improve your website ranking on Google? Uh, not in and of itself, uh, but by having a podcast, you start building up a lot of backlinks to your site, right? Especially when you guest on other people's shows or you invite them to your show, they might end up linking to you um, and posting about it on social media. Those backlinks are signals to Google that this site is authoritative and relevant for this particular subject that I'm ranking for. So it can be an indirect uh, boost because of that. Uh, if you think about what Google's doing when it looks at a site, you know, it reads the words on the page and even some of the meta tags and such to try and figure out what is this page about? Um, now there's gonna be a bunch of podcasts out there. How does Google differentiate between your podcast for new entrepreneurs and someone else's? Uh, it's gonna look at backlinks because that's how it determines authority. It, and so if a bunch of people are linking to you, that suggests that they like your stuff and they wanted to share it, which means it was good. And so if you have a ton of backlinks and this other guy's got like five, guess what? Google's gonna show your stuff ahead of theirs. Cause I'm so popular. Cause I got all these <laughs> backlinks, babe. I got yes. ba backlinks. Basically backlinks are like groupies for the Backstreet Boys, right? They just be, those backlinks <laughs> be following you all over the place waiting for you to drop some wicked new rhymes, but I'm, I'm, I'm off, I'm off the chain today. I'm sorry. You got me talking about backers. So basically a backlink is a link somewhere out there in the, in the internet, in the web that that has a link back to your website. That's what a backlink is. Correct. And, um, not all backlinks are created equal. I should point out because, uh, if a lot of people try to game the system, right. When they figure out, Oh, this is how Google's doing it. Let's try to cheat and get a site ranked real fast. So they'll build their own network of blogs, right? They'll buy a bunch of cheap websites, copy, copy, paste, 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 and link it all back. Obviously that's not helping anyone. And so Google uh, has gotten pretty good at figuring out what a private blog network looks like, if this is a legitimate site or not, but also mm -hmm. because it's tracking this authority of every site, it can know, okay, if a link is coming from a site with no domain authority, eh, I'm not gonna value it very highly. But if it's coming from an established site that has a, a, a value up in the 90s or something, if this is a credible news site, if it is a scientific site, um, you know, linking to your blog about a topic that suggests that, hey, if these guys like it, it must be good. And so there's, there's multiple layers of determining, okay, are these good backlinks or bad link backlinks? And so you want quality and then also quantity of good ones. So one of the things that is really unique about a podcast is that it's, it's distributed, it's pushed out via what we call an RSS feed. Mm -hmm. So I set up my RSS feed at, at one site, a hosting site, let's call it Buzzsprout. And then that's going to pump it out to iTunes, to Spotify, to iHeartRadio, to Amazon Music, to all these, the RSS feed, it, it blasts out to like 20, 30, 40, 50 plus places. Right. So if I have the link to my website attached to my RSS feed, to my episodes, to my uh, my podcast description, I'm thinking that's probably going to create a ton of different backlinks on all these other platforms, right? It does, and and it helps. Uh, but like I said, it's all going to be about the how Google determines the value of that backlink. So social media backlinks won't be valued as highly as uh, you know business website that's established, um, or maybe even a, a popular blog site just because people can post on social media willy-nilly uh, as many times as they want. And so if you're promoting your own stuff, post, 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 post for my own channel, okay, Google will give you some credit for it, but not as much as if these were from separate, uh, other more authoritative sources. So um, yeah, the different podcast directories, those will help. Um, some will help more than others. Understood, understood. Very, very good stuff, Jeff from Fro Bro, because what I just heard is that uh, not all 
uh, group. If if backlinks are groupies, then not all groupies are created equal. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. The, the anyway. Um, Enough with the groupies. We're talking here with Jeff from FroBro.com. So we've talked about how to design our website. We've talked about how to rank our website and develop backlinks and use keywords. But what about ads, Jeff? Like I want to build a website that I know I can spend a dollar in ads and get $2 back on my website. That is the Mm -hmm. dream, baby. That's right. (laughs) I'm trying to build the machine, bro. Let's go. So tell me, where's a good place what should, what should I be thinking about when I'm going to start to run ad traffic back to my website? So I'd say before you even start to run ad traffic, you have to make sure you've spent the time on your website like we discussed earlier. You know, putting the intention into the messaging, the layout, the design of what you want people to do so it's not confusing um, because you have to have that conversion side at least, you know, mostly figured out before you start running ads. And that's on the traffic side, right? Two pieces of the puzzle. When you run ads, uh, you'll start coming up with a list of keywords that you want to target. And you're basically auctioning, it's an auction for those keywords. So when someone types into Google podcast for new entrepreneurs, um, Google's gonna look at all the people paying for Google ads and say, okay, uh, Mark's paying for, for it, this guy's paying for it, you know, and you're bidding essentially, okay, I'm gonna show this one to this guy. I'll show this one to this guy. And you appear ahead of the search results. So that's how you get in front of people. Um, And so you will get eyeballs on your stuff from people searching for your keywords without having to wait for your site to rank for it. Um, So you're basically replacing time with money. Um, So as long as you've got a budget, you can do that. Now, um, with that being said, you've got to spend time figuring out what your keywords should be because uh, your initial list might be wrong or not complete. And you can start fiddling with negative keywords, meaning, okay, don't show me uh to someone if they included this in their search um or do show me if it's this one take this off the list okay narrow down my geographic area if you're a local company um let let me give you an example so if you're a uh, cleaning company right you don't and you're cleaning windows or the outside of a house you don't want to just search uh you know pay for house cleaning because people might be thinking you're a maid service um and so you have to get really specific in determining okay which keywords do i actually want to use and which ones do I not want? So and I, I, again, we're, we're back to keywords because we're just so, especially in the world of AI, mm-hmm. right? Don't even get me started on AI and keywords, but what are some tools that I can use to create some better keywords? Well, Google has a free keyword planner. Uh, so as long as you create a Google ads account, you can use it and do research to find out uh, what search volume there is for certain keywords and how competitive it's going to be to see you know what you're going to be paying to actually get in front of the people with those uh, searches. Um, There's other tools out there that are specifically for SEO. So like Ahrefs or SEMrush, uh, you can do a lot of research in there and you can even analyze your competitor sites. You can look at their backlinks, you can see their domain authority, you can see what pages they're, what keywords they're ranking for on certain pages. And so you can, if you wanna go head to head, just say, okay, I'm gonna go after that keyword too, or I'm gonna make a more long tail version of that keyword. Um, And that can inform your decisions essentially throughout that campaign process. Does that help? It does. I use a, a tool called vidIQ also, which is more mm, of like yeah. a YouTube. That's for YouTube. It's a yeah. YouTube tool. But it, I think it still is going to apply, right? Because YouTube and Google are, well, they're basically one and the same, no? Uh, they're, I mean, it's, YouTube is owned by Google, obviously, but it is technically a separate search engine. YouTube's the second search, largest search engine right behind Google. So right. I believe their indexes are indeed separate. Um, which is why those stats might be slightly different for each platform. So I would assume you're, similar, but there's probably similarities, but you might have different demographics, right? So if you've got a younger demographic searching on YouTube, they might be phrasing things differently than someone who's just going to Google to search for a business that they want to hire. Uh, and so you have to take that into account. And that's why it's worth doing that research to figure out what the search volume is for a term. And one that might be really popular on YouTube might not be as popular uh, with the traditional web. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I kind of, I wasn't expecting to go down this route, but I just kind of touched on it. Um, AI, what role do you think artificial intelligence is going to have on, on websites and rankings? Cause I'd imagine people are going to start using AI to design sites and write copy. What, what role, do, what impact, heck, we're probably gonna have AI building complete websites very, very soon. What role do you think AI is going to serve for web, web ranking in future? Uh, I think it's going to save a lot of people, a lot of time. Uh, because it can do some of that research for us. 
And so there's already tools like uh, uh, Jasper has some SEO article writing templates built into it. There's a uh, surf city, uh, surfer SEO, I think it has one. And what it does is uh, it'll tell you, okay, if you want this article that you're writing to rank like, for this keyword, you've got to add this many more <laughs> words. You got to get this many backlinks to even have a chance. And so it kind of tells you what you need to do and what's possible. Um, but yeah, now with chat GPT, it can be writing articles for you. And some of the newer, uh, iterations of that are going to be able to look at the internet and give you an even better blog post. So like chat GPT, you know, is trained up to like 2021. It doesn't know current events, but right. the next generation ones that are coming out now, they can look at the internet and have up to date facts. And so, yeah, they absolutely can write entire blog posts for you. Um, so we're getting to that point now where if you don't start using these AI tools, you're just going to be uh left behind in terms of everybody else running past you because now the computers are doing all the boilerplate work for you and you're just kind of signing off on it and doing some quick edits here and there it's gonna be very difficult to keep up i, I could tell you that much what my by far the largest expense in my agency is people and i love all the i love all my people they're great they're beautiful i love yeah. you all uh but you're expensive you know just like my kids you know i love you very much <laughs> you're not like my kids i kid but um you know, AI is just such a useful tool for, I think, scaling mm -hmm. because now one team member can do the same, uh, the same role in five times with five times, uh, five times faster as, as can I in some places, even in even replace and tighten up processes. So I am very bullish on that. Very, yeah. very bullish on that. You know, Jeff, I do have another question. You know, because again, now that we're talking about leads, lead generation, we talked a little bit about Google advertising keywords. Um, social media is something that's interesting me, interesting to me too, right? Because every that that's basically the the formula for how these social media platforms generate cash. It's through ads; they run ads. Mm -hmm. You know, this landscape changes just about every day. <laughs> you know, it's 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 tough to determine where I should be running ads. If I'm a business owner looking to run some social media ads, what, what should I be asking myself? What should I be looking for before I start running my social media ads? Uh, that's, that's great. And obviously it depends a little bit on what industry you're in and where your market is. So if your demographic exists on a certain platform, you can run ads there, but there's other factors. So Facebook has gotten really expensive to run ads there. Um, but the biggest shift that I've seen lately um, in social media is TikTok. Um, and the way their algorithm approaches social media. So all the traditional platforms, Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, it was all about building a following, right? And so when you first create your account, you got zero followers, you can post all day, nobody's gonna see it. You can maybe add some trending hashtags and hope you get lucky, uh, but it's really hard because you first gotta get the followers before people start seeing your stuff. Um, now with TikTok, it's all about the creative, right? It's that content piece, that individual post. What is this post about? What's in it? Who would like this post? And then TikTok goes and shows it to that person. So your first post with zero followers could get 800 views, 10,000 views. Uh, it's all based on what's in it. And so now that's a totally level playing field, right? Plus a quick ramp up if you know what you're doing, uh, because, hey, you don't have to work to build that following first. You just got to start producing good stuff and people will like it and see it, which is great for small businesses, right? Because you can get hyper-focused on what you're posting about. If you're a restaurant, sure, post videos in your kitchen of pictures of the, the menu items, testimonials, whatever it is, your local area is gonna see that. And when someone's searching for Mexican food, they're gonna see that. But more and more, uh, the younger demographics um, are not going to Google to search for things. They're going to TikTok. So if you think of Google as you know, a search engine, for your computer on your desktop. TikTok is a search engine for video, short form video on your phone. And more and more people are just staying there rather than leaving and going to Google to find stuff. It's, it's impressive. And so uh, it's not quite saturated yet. So there's still opportunity now, if you're a brand that wants to establish themselves, it's still pretty easy to go do that on TikTok. Uh, so that's what I've seen. And I've the other platforms are, taking notice <laughs> and they're like, Hey, uh, maybe we should make some changes. So we're probably going to see some of that in the coming months and years. Uh, we'll, we'll see some big shifts in how their algorithms are working. Well, I think that's an interesting point too, Jeff, even if you're 
investing, designing, creating specialized content for TikTok, those videos are going to go great on Instagram as reels. Mm-hmm. They're going to be great on yep. YouTube as shorts. So it's not like you just have to be all in on one social media platform. Yep. They can easily be repurposed for whichever the, the flavor of the month is. Right. And th- that's the beauty of it, right? So you spend the time to figure out what your video is going to be, but there's now tools that can repost that for you like, and schedule it out. You don't even have to manually go post it everywhere. You just do it once and now it's everywhere. Yeah. Which you can actually do this in perpetuity too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I just asked my team, go back to some of my more popular podcast episodes, episodes with some of my bigger, more well-known guests and they repurpose them. They throw them up on YouTube as shorts and they'll reach 5,000, 10,000 people. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to do anything. I just asked my, one of my, one of my guys to go in and um, start repurposing the stuff I already had on file. So I, I, I really like that idea, Jeff. It kind of as you explained it, we, and I kind of fleshed it out in my mind, um, creating videos, thoughtful, telling a story, hooky, good call to action, speaking to the right audience, and then uh, you know fi- finding finding ways to kind of repurpose that for different platforms or mm-hmm. um, really good way to get bang for your buck. Yeah, and especially if you start um, strategizing, right? If you if you have your YouTube channel doing long form videos that go into detail about stuff. You can even use some of your short form video on social media to kind of drive people to that, right? So you pull out a clip from one of these shows that you did and with a link back to the full episode. And a lot of people will click through and watch that. And if you're monetized over here, great. Um, if you're selling a product or service, now you've got really interested people that you know are watching it. So it, it can start to snowball. And I think that's a really good reason. You know, we just talked a minute ago about using the Google Keyword Planner, Ahrefs, some other more sophisticated keyword tools. Man, I think that's why it makes sense to like do a ton of keyword research and kind of put your put together your strategy at one time mm-hmm. because everything is interlinked. If someone sees you on social media and they go over to your website, you want there to be a harmonious message there. Right. The same words, the same, you know, the same clarity um, all, all through, you know, they, they land on your website, they click the link and it goes through. The, the whole thing needs to be in line. And one of the problems that I've run into is I'm always tweaking. <laughs> I always want to like move this around and move that around. But one of the problems is then you can run into misalignments in your messaging. Whereas, you know, someone, you know, if you change your Instagram bio, it, you know, someone will kind of expect something different when they land on your website and, and so on and so forth. Right. I mean, there's some areas you should be tweaking all the time, like your campaigns in the back end, like we talked about on Google ads, you know, making sure your keywords are dialed in and you get rid of the ones that aren't helping. Um, and sometimes, you know, split testing your landing page, right? Tweaking different headlines and what's getting you the best conversion rate. But you don't want to compromise the messaging while you're fiddling there. Good points. Good points. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we've been sitting here talking to Mr. Jeff Fulkerson. He is the Fro Bro from the, or from Frobo. Fro- <laughs> Frobro.com. <laughs> Frobro.com. We're here with Jeff Fulkerson for Frobro.com. That's right. And uh, just laying it out, Jeff, we've like we've kind of like just touched the the tip of the iceberg on a bunch of these topics, which are really key to getting your website to start selling more. Jeff, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, go a little bit deeper, get a, get a little bit more information on how you can help them get their website working. Where's the best place we can contact you? Well, frober.com, uh, there's buttons there to schedule a meeting with me. You can also go to frober.com slash meeting if you want to remember that, and that'll take you directly to schedule with me. Um, but that way we can take a look at your website. I can do an SEO audit if you want, or we can talk through um, some marketing options for you, depending on what your budget is. Because we've talked about a ton of things, and this landscape is constantly changing. You know, if Google changes their algorithm or something new comes out, and it's hard to keep in front of it. So obviously, if you're looking to hire someone to help partner with you on that. This is what we do. And we live and breathe this every day. Yeah. At the very least, Jeff has given you enough information to be dangerous, (laughs) enough to be dangerous. Uh, There's there's always things you can do on your own. I mean, one thing that I have a peeve, right? If you have a website and it says home in the title tag, that that's your lowest hanging fruit for SEO. You know, there's millions of sites that's sites out there that say home, but that doesn't tell Google anything. Are you a home repair store? Do you do home renovations? Are you, uh, you know, making houses? We don't, Google doesn't know. So change that to a keyword that is relevant to your business. You know, podcast for young entrepreneurs after hours. 
that's much better than home after hours. That doesn't tell Google anything. So fix that. <laughs> and then we can do the rest after that. Boom. Make Jeff happy. Fix that tag right now. Get the home out of there. Uh, Jeff, before I let you go here, it's time for the world famous rapid fire section. Are you ready? As ready as I'll ever be. All right. Good deal. Jeff, what's the scariest movie you've ever seen? Oh, and the ring. Pretty terrifying. Pretty terrifying. If you could be any animal, what kind of animal would you be? A uh, cheetah. Because it runs fast. They sure do. They sure do. Uh, dogs or cats? Both. Living together? This <laughs> is great. They're good for different reasons. I like them both. That's fair. That's fair. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Southern California. Which is where you live now. Which is where I live, yes. After living here, it'd be hard to live anywhere else. Maybe this, in the hey, tropics, listen, but yeah. That is the right answer. If, if you're not living where you li where you want to live, then find a way to get there, baby. You got this. Uh, if you could sit next to anyone on a plane, who'd you sit next to? My wife. Wow. Wow, that's a good one. Jo Joanna, I would, I would sit next to you too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, final question for you here. If you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what would you say? Uh, go all in sooner. Go all in sooner. Believe in yourself, baby. You got this. Jeff, thanks for joining the After Hours Entrepreneur today. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Nice chatting with you. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got some tools. I hope your website is ranking and rocking and rolling and ready to make some sales. Thanks for listening to After Hours Entrepreneur. I will catch you here next time on the show. Now it's your turn. Go take the action. Peace.